welcome to another edition of step by step uh, which we have learned that it's a teens program uh, designed specifically to build the foundation for the young people as you go into adulthood right. uh, before we can go any further shall we pray father in the name of jesus christ we thank you for who you are we thank you lord for everything that you have determined concerning our lives we pray heavenly father that even as we are going to learn this day you and you alone shall open our eyes and that the spirit of revelation shall take his place in our hearts that we will be able to understand that which you have proposed and prepared for us in Jesus' name we pray amen and amen <coughs> so we are going to start our first lesson today and um, we are going to basically look at the Christian faith and uh, the doctrine. Uh, this is going to be the first of many, many other uh, series. And uh, my prayer is that all of us shall be able to follow uh, as a family or maybe just as a team and that God will bless us. So getting into our lesson, um, we are going to, uh, I'll call this an introduction to Christian living and doctrine and uh, in that part the first thing we're going to look at today is who are the main players who are these people that are there when we talk about living what is this world all about okay because uh, when you look at Christianity itself it is a matter of uh, how one lives out their life what is the faith the set of beliefs what do we believe in what do we understand so for you to understand this you must first understand the players in this whole thing okay so basically the main players in this world uh we'll talk about it's actually god himself and after god talk about man and uh satan everything that we are going to discuss concerning uh doctrine concerning christian living borders uh within these three okay it's about the way who God is, who Satan is, who man is, and how they interact with each other, and what the outcome of everything is. So to understand this, we are going to uh, at least have some basic knowledge of everything, then we can build from that. So first of all, we are going to start with God. The Bible in the book of Genesis states that in the beginning, God. So we cannot start with anything else but God. Amen. So our first scripture today, we are going to start our learning from Job chapter 11, verse 7 through to 9. I'll read from the King James Version and it says, Can you search out the deep things of God? Can you find out the limits of the Almighty, they are higher than the heavens. What can you do? Deeper than shore, what can you know? Their measure is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. Okay, so this is a discussion that one of Job's friends was saying. Uh, Zopa to be specific and he says can you search out the deep things of God he's asking is it are you able to know the heart of God are you able to know what lies inside of God he says again to him and says can you find the limit of the almighty then he says he is deeper he is wider than the earth he's everything what is it that um uh this man is talking about he's giving us a glimpse into who god is god is so deep his knowledge is so deep that we cannot understand him his size is so big that we cannot even measure so in every aspect of measurement either human measurement spiritual measurement, whatever uh aspect that you might love to take you cannot measure god so in short what we are saying this uh, day is that uh, it is not easy to define God. You cannot have a definition for God to say God is this. Because to be able to define God, it means that we have been able to understand him. 
Of course, he's the object of worship. He is the creator. He's all those things. So it is not easy to define God because he is beyond man's ability and language and expression and knowledge of him. Okay? So for you to want to understand God, if at all, you may find out who God is to say this is God and you know who God is. That place is probably not one that you ever find. Okay? Let us look at another scripture. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 and 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 and 9 and 10 and 12. So, verse 8 says, Love will never end, but all those gifts will come to an end. Even the gift of prophecy and the gift of speaking in different tongues and uh, languages and the gifts of knowledge. These will all end because this knowledge and these prophecies we have are not complete. But uh, when perfection comes, the things... It says, but when perfection comes, the things that are not complete will end. Okay? This, uh, this 12 says, it is the same with us. Now we see God as if we are looking at uh, a reflection in a mirror. But then, in the future, we will see him right before our, future, before our eyes. Now we know only a part, but at that Time, we will know fully as God has known us or I will know fully as God has known me so what does this tell us okay so this tells us to say that uh, what we know about God imagine this is Paul the man that has written almost uh, uh, over half the New Testament even himself is saying even the prophecies that we give about God they are just in part. Even the knowledge that we have about God is just in part. Now we know, I mean, now we know in part, but there shall be a time when we shall see God as he is. Amen. So it is very important to learn that even as we get to know God, you shall never come to a point where you say, now I know God, I know his thoughts, I've seen him all. No. Every part will know about God will always be in part. As long as we are on earth, our knowledge, our experience, our um, understanding of God will always be in part, will always be limited. Why? Because God is beyond creation. Amen. So, uh, being creator, God knows all about us, but we only know of him what he has chosen to reveal to us. We know God by revelation. Hallelujah. The way we know God, we know him by revelation. So, uh, let's look at um, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 29. Deuteronomy chapter 29. Verse 29 tells us here. Yeah. The Lord, our God, has secrets known to no one. We are not accountable for them. But we and our children are accountable forever for all that he has revealed to us. So that we may obey all the terms of these instructions. Amen. So, what we see here is that even when it comes to the knowledge of God, there is a way, uh, there is a place where we end. We don't know God fully. You know, we don't understand God fully. There is a certain limit to which God, for I mean, to which we understand God. And there is a way in which God has come. Even the instructions that he has given us concerning certain issues, you find that they are limited. And what God has not revealed to you, that you cannot uh, be held accountable for. So, you'll find that there are people that will talk about God 